Okay, looks like we're live. Let me get rid of this because it's going to be in my way. I hadn't planned to stream this morning, but I got to pull in some stuff out and I thought, oh, this would be fun to share and to discover what all I've got stashed away. I basically, in the last few days, have had time upstairs for various reasons. One, because I haven't been able to do the stairs very well. But um, so I'll, I've just been doing what I already had up there, which was working on some uh, needlework that I already had taken up to work on while I was watching TV. So basically what this is, um, is just some scraps that I have that is backed with some fleece fabric. And the idea is it's going to be I believe what it's going to be is a large needle book sort of, you know, whatever I want to put in here type of thing for doing needlework with. Or slow stitching, as some people call it. Um, so it's, I plan on it being shaped here at the end. And it's a little wonky. It's going to have to be straightened out some. Because, you know, when you do all these stitches. Hi, Barb. Barbara. How are you today? So when you do all these stitches, it kind of draws up a little bit. So I'll have to go back in and um, resize it before I line it. And I still have some more things to do with it. Um, it's, uh, it still needs some beading done on there. I've done any beading because I didn't have any beads upstairs. And I don't think I'm, I'm not planning on taking any up there. Beads get everywhere. And we have uh, wood floors now. It's not like they can drop in the carpet and that's as far as they go. But um, we now have wood floors. So i am decided for now I'm not going to take any beads upstairs. So I'll get it to this, get them to this state while I'm sitting watching TV or whatever I'm watching. And um, then I will bring them back downstairs to do the beading and to um, finish them out. So that's the plan for this one is to have a, a book. Uh, of pages, uh, you know, leaves inside um, that I could put my needles in because I just have needles all over the place. So I just want to get them all in one place and I'll probably have a place in here maybe to um, put a tape measure and a couple little things like these. These are, um, it's actually plastic canvas, but it works really well for spacing because all these little holes, you can just mark the holes and that way you're spacing is already on your fabric and you can do that. Same thing with this circle one. You can stitch circles. How's the weather, Barb? You freezing up there? Kind of off and on here. We had a little bit of snow the other day. Nothing like you get. Just our first good dusting of snow. And uh, then it's just been a little bit cold, but not like you, girl. <laughs> yeah, beats Katie rink, that's for sure. Not only that, but I'm sure the dog would love to get a hold of those. So anyway, I'm just going to make this this one for several things to fit in. And then I could take this upstairs and have all my needles and, you know, um, things like that. I might even have a, I'm not sure yet, I might even have a little place to put some short laces and, you know, just little things like that. That um, I don't want to take up a lot of room by my chair upstairs and make a big mess but just something that I could pull out of. So that's what this one is. And I have another one, just not just like this, but the same, the same size and shape started that I started yesterday. So that one, this one is ready to be beaded. And it's, it's got some pretty nice areas on it. I didn't do a lot of fancy stitches, but um, you probably can't tell in, in the camera. But all these little flowers are embroidered. The print was already on the um, on the fabric, so I just picked some similar colors and embroidered the the piece the um, flowers. And um, here's another thing that kind of turned out interesting. This, let me see if I can get it still. There, this and this are the same fabric. See the polka dots? And on this one, I just took threads and stitched from dot to dot. 
and then I put on all these little little flowers. That turned out really cute. I thought it was time consuming. The flowers didn't take near as long as putting those lines in. And then this is some um, tatting that I stitched down, and then I did some seed stitching and some straight stitching. Here's another big flower, and that's just stitched on there. And what else is interesting on here? Also, it's pretty plain. But, you know, I left room to do quite a, I want to do quite a bit of beading on this one. Since this is going to be mine, I just want to, you know, I wanted to do some beading on it. Okay, so that's that one. Then I have these other little ones that I was working on, too. They're not beaded yet, either. And um, they'll either end up incorporated in uh, some journals or maybe even some smaller needle books that... I can sell or give away either one. Yeah, it is on this one, especially. Let me hold up really close and see what happens. Yeah, it's still hard to see it. And I found too that um, this is all done with pearl cotton and it's it's too thick for some things. I like it for doing um, the blanket stitch on these little blanket stitch ones. I like it for doing that because it's just a single thread and it shows up really nice. But when you start doing this embroidery over here, it's it's a little too heavy. So I for the other one that I'm working on, I'm gonna take some uh, embroidery thread up and use that. And um, I think that'll go a lot better. So that's where I am with these, where I'm at with these. They're just, you know, similar fabrics. Um, and, the one I did for the sewing machine, uh, the sewing machine for the um, sewing book cover, which that's not at hand right now. I don't even know where it is right now. It had um, raw edges, and I just decided I wanted to do it that way, but I just decided that um, Barbara, I already watched that, and it was really neat. Oh, hi, Janet. I got through half of your um, your video this morning while I was in. I had to go to the chiropractor. Thank goodness it was great. But um, thanks, Janet. But I I got to watch a little bit, just about half of your uh, video this morning, which of course I totally enjoyed. But anyway, I decided that I don't like the raw edge. So all of these I stitched on the machine. And um, I like to do it. I like that better. In other words, stitch the pieces down with the machine. And um, I like that much better. So that's the way I'll keep doing that. So what, what I was doing was I came downstairs and I thought, okay, I'm going to look for my ribbon embroidery stuff. Hi, Christina. Nice to have you here. We're just talking about slow stitching and what I've been doing. But I came down to try to find the ribbon embroidery stuff. Because I was pretty sure I had some uh, ribbon. And it's hard to find locally. You know, you can't just go into any store and they have silk ribbon. So I thought, well, I think I have some. So I just came down to look for that. And I, I totally have not really gone through my sewing supplies since we moved three years ago. It's sort of like the last thing that I'm going to tackle in the craft area. And it's on the other side of my room. There's a divider between us between the two rooms. So I was over there and I thought, well, while I'm here, I see some other stuff I wanna pull out and see what I can use in there. So I don't know, you guys, this is terrible. You've gotten me started back into stitching again. And it's kind of been taking my mind over the last couple of days. So that's where I'm at. Um, I got journals I'm still working on, but this morning I just thought, you know, I'd do this. So I'm going to lay this aside, and basically what I'm going to do is go through the stuff I found. Janet, did you see this? Were you here when I was showing this? This is a plastic canvas that you, like, use cruel-type yarn on, or or you can even use um, uh, just regular yarn on to do designs. And I picked up a piece of this while I was out this morning because I want to use it to mark uh, like a ruler. Or what am I trying to say? Like a stencil, like a grid stencil. And I tried it on something and it works really good. So 
I got a one piece. I got this and this little one because I figured this would be easier to hold, you know, against a piece like this. And I then I can mark it or I can just either stitch right beside it where the hole is to show me where I'm going. And then just another one. I just cut a couple of them out of one big sheet. So I still have quite a bit left. And then I got a circle one. Now, it wasn't marked like I have it marked now. I did that with a paint pen because I thought it would be easier to see the circles because I get my eyesight's not great and I get confused sometimes. So I thought, okay, I'll mark the circles and then I'll mark a half a circle, like if you want to do it in a corner, and then a quarter of a circle. So I cut it in half. This was a big circle. I cut it in half and just made this little guide. And I'm looking forward to using these. So I just stuck those together. So that'll probably, like I said, that'll probably go in my, my big needle book that I'm doing. All right, so enough of that. So here's some of the stuff I pulled out. And this is going to be, and you know what, Janet? Janet from across the sea. <laughs> um, I saw your nice little box that you got with all of your stuff in it. And I thought, well, duh. Why don't I think to do, well, I've only been working on this for like a week. But I thought, why didn't I think to do that? Because, you know, I want to be able to do some stuff upstairs. So that was another thought that I had to do some of that. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about as I'm pulling the stuff out. What do I want to um, what do I want to make portable that I can take upstairs and take up a very small space? I mean, you know, I've got the, half the basement for my craft stuff. I hate to encroach on the rest of the house because, you know, there's somebody else who lives here, too. <laughs> So I'm, you know, I'm trying to just keep in a little bitty corner where my chick, my recliner is. And um, I just want a small box that um, I could put a lot of stuff in that'll just be at my fingertips if I want to use it as I'm up there. Most of the time, since I'm, since I'm putting these together on the sewing machine, I will have all the backgrounds done and I'll just be adding things like flowers and maybe some ribbon or a little bit of lace or a little bit of rickrack. So I don't need a whole bunch in my, in my carry around box. So of course I pulled out a whole bunch of stuff because that's the way I am, you know, more is better. <laughs> so, but the idea that I'm trying to do is um, get a small amount of stuff that I could sit by my desk. Hi, Mary. Thank you for coming. We're just talking about stitching and I'm pulling out, I'm trying, I'm going through some stuff that I just pulled out of my sewing room that I want to use with my stitching. And I'm going to try to make me a small, um, some kind of container. I've got, Lord knows I've got plenty of containers, but make me some kind of container that I could just sit by my chair. That's very unobtrusive. And, um, that when I'm not working on it, I can close up and just sort of, you know, almost be out of sight. Now, I had this old um, sewing box that was my mother-in-law's. I, to tell you the truth, I don't know why she had it. She was the worst sewer I ever saw, <laughs> but she had it, and she probably got it from somebody else. So, um, but I inherited it from her. And it's a nice old sewing box. It's the kind that uh, it's on legs and it opens up and then it opens up again. So it has these small compartments that, you know, aren't very big and aren't very deep. But it works well to put, you know, your scissors and little things like that in there. Now, this lace, which I, which I just cut off of this, I think... I'm pretty sure this was some for my wedding dress. I kept it for years and years and years. Well, we've been married for 40 something years. So, you know, I've had it for a long time and I just, my daughter didn't, didn't need it. Um, I didn't really have anybody else that I thought would want it. And um, it was just a ton of lace. So I finally took it apart. And thought, you know, I can do something else with it that's that makes more sense. 
instead of just saving it forever. Yeah, Barbara. They're they're pretty pretty ingenious the way they're made, those those um, boxes. Let's see what else here. Ooh, that's pretty. See these little pieces like this. Sometimes I get uh, I do sewing, wedding sewing for people, and this came off of our um I know this these right here. My pastor's daughter, she got married several years ago and um, she felt a little bit uncomfortable about, she felt like her dress was not modest enough for her because it had no, uh, you know, it was like a sweetheart style and it had no shoulders or anything to it. So what we did was we made a whole new top for the dress and it turned out really pretty. So this is some of the leftovers from that. I used to have, oh gosh, I don't know, two or three big bins of um, lace or, you know, like bridal satin and different things like that. Um, that type of fabric. And I finally decided to get rid of it because I really wasn't using it. Now, see, this is all stitched. I'm not going to take that off. This is all stitched onto this lace. The back of it, and you see those little dots. Well, it's the same as this. I love this stuff. It's so pretty. And that's what's stitched on the back of this. So we're going to just leave that together. I'm going to put that with it. And that all goes with this. So anyway, I went over. Sorry, I'm a little bit uh, disjointed today. I've been like this for a week. I don't know what the deal is, but I go, I jump from thing to thing. I don't know if it's the weather or what it is, but oh, that one's cute. Look at that. That's cute. So you can take laces that are, you know, in a in a big bigger piece, and um, especially if it's on a net background, and you can just cut around there pretty close, really, as long as you're not cutting the thread of the embroidery itself. You can cut around there, and then you can tack it down onto um, what you're working on, and it'll just look like It'll almost look like it's been embroidered onto what you're working on. Hi, Melody. How are you today? I had to go to the chiropractor this morning, which means 40 minute drive. I keep thinking, how silly is this? But boy, when I leave, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it was worth <laughs> it was worth every minute of the drive. Now see, this is a little bit. I don't think I would use this. It's just too big. So I'm going to put this somewhere. This is to go in the no bag, which I don't have a no bag. I have to find one. Oh, over there. And on the floor. Here's some more bridal stuff. Isn't that pretty? Look. You know, you get the idea. That's real pretty. It looks like little roses. That came off of, I think that came off of a, a mother's, mother of the bride dress I worked on, I think. That's pretty junky. I'm throwing that away. Okay, and then I found this big piece of black lace, which apparently came off of a petticoat or something, but it's really pretty. And I like black. I'll set that over there. What else? Now this one I might use. It's not huge. It looks like little roses on a ruffle. That's pretty. So I'll keep this one out. While I was in uh, while I was in town, I went by Joanne's, and um, just to see if they had any thing I wanted. <laughs> but I really went to I wanted to get the um, uh, this stuff. It's basically what, what I went for and um, to see if they had any narrow trims. Now, I think this will be interesting. This is like a gold. 
what do they call it? Ribbons, what they call it. You can tell how old that is. Walmart, 50 cents eh, for two yards. And I think that'll be the perfect size to, to use with, with the stitching. Yeah, Melody, I usually do that too. I try to take stuff with me when I can. And then I came across this gold embroidery thread. I'll put that over here for now. And uh, some, here's some other um, stuff. This is GIMP. It's called GIMP. So this is the kind of stuff that they use on upholstery around the edges. Come on, camera. I got a lot of that, so that would be pretty. I mean, you could put this down and put a, put a bead in each little curly cue there. So I think that would be a good, good one. So anyway, while I was at Joann's, I know I'm probably skipping around. While I was at Joann's, I um, picked up some, um, what did I pick up? I picked up some trim. And where's my bag? I got so much stuff in here, I don't even see what I'm doing. I didn't leave it upstairs, I don't think. Oh, here it is, right by me. So I got some laces. I got some more pearl cotton, but in a smaller size. Just the basic colors. I got some gold thread. I got some green rickrack. We don't have any. I like using green. I think that'll be cute for the, you know, put the flowers with it. And I got some red velvet ribbon. Hmm. And then I got a jelly roll in some plain colors because I didn't really have that many. So, like that. And then I got some, I needed some quilting thread, which I use for a lot of things. So I got them. And then, duh, got more needles, like I need needles, like I need a hole in the head. So anyway, got all these two to use. Whoops. So what's everybody else working on? Twirly good thingy. I brought home that yarn. Oh, you got it? You got the yarn winder? I love it, don't you? I just sit and do it forever. And then you can stack them all up because they're nice little fat, nice little fat balls. Yeah, I was surprised. That was in the, um, you know, they always have a bin where they have the cheaper stuff. But I don't think this was necessarily meant to be in that bin because it was over three dollars. But it's how much is it in there? I thought it said hmm. I thought it said five yards. Now I don't see it. So anyway, I, and I got some more crocheted stuff because I use it a lot on my tags. So when I, when I see it, I grab it at the right size. So here's the threads. I put them over here. And these over here. See, I've already got way too much. But I will, you know, weed, weed out some more eventually or do smaller pieces. Then I got this lace today. Because I figured I could use that in pieces. Now some of this will go on tags and different things too. But I mainly got it with the idea of using it with this, with these little stitching projects. I've used up so much of my really pretty lace on tags. And I have, I had, I have three that I really like a lot for tags that I use all the time. Here's the other one. Look at these leaves. Don't you think those leaves would be pretty with some um, ribbon roses? Aha. Uh -huh. 
Barb, I almost picked up a needle threader today. I am having the hardest time getting used to these new glasses. I mean, here was the other one. It kind of has, it has gold, gold threads in it. And since I got the gold um, thread, I thought, well, it would be nice to have something to go with that. So I, you know, I want to do a couple of um, these tones, and I thought this would be pretty with those tones something a little bit less colorful. And then this was a um, this was out of a curtain, just a medallion that I cut out of a curtain. So I brought that out. Let's see. I'm gonna pile these laces up because I think I'm probably gonna use, I know I'm gonna use all those. There's a piece of that. There's a piece of that. I'm not real crazy about it, but it'll do. And then I'll put these in there. And that we have to think about. And here are the black laces going in there. Actually, this wide black lace needs to go. Oh, I have to stop and think about where things are getting done. The black lace needs to stay down here. Hi, Teresa. Little sister. Oh, well, I was showing my um, stitching that I've been doing. And right now what I'm doing is I went, I came down and I pulled out, Teresa, I came down and I pulled out a bunch of laces and stuff out of the sewing area that I want to use with some stitching. Because you guys have gotten me so into it again. That's what I've just been doing the last few days. So, you know, my mind goes in many directions. So I'm going to take these wide laces and put them, put keep them down here by the sewing machine. Because that's where they will be used in that one too. And, and I think, eh, yeah, the pink. That's two. I don't need to put them in my box to take upstairs if, if, if you know, if I'm not going to use them up there. So these things need to stay down here, and they will go by the sewing machine for when I am putting my pieces together. And then I came across some... Crocheted stuff. That's not going up. This is some wild colors. I don't know what I was thinking when I did this. <laughs> Woo, they have a bright. Huh. Ah, Barbara. Don't be silly. Yeah, I think that this is more journal cover type stuff. I'm not even sure what this is. Oh, these are flowers. Ooh, these are, these are pretty flowers. Let's see. How in the world do I have them put together? These are um, my latest scissors, sewing scissors. I usually, I, I don't know how many pairs of Ginger scissors I have over the years. I have quite a few. Big ones, little ones, little tiny ones. Um, but the last pair of sewing scissors I bought, these are um, Guggenheim. Guggenheim. These are 10 inches long. But they're very comfortable. They have like a rubbery coating on the handle. And these things will cut. Oh, my gosh. I can cut it at least 10 layers of cotton fabric with these. Just wham, slice right through it. And probably more. Now the gingers do the same thing when they're new. Um, I've had some of mine so long that, and they've been sharpened several times, but I don't have any place to sharpen them right now that I trust. So I don't, I really don't want to send them back to Germany because it costs like, I don't know, seven or $8 a pair plus shipping. 
for to send them back to the factory to have them sharpened. These are very pretty. They're kind of big. Let me show you. They're just little crocheted flowers. Ooh, when that thing decides to there. So I'm just going to take a couple of those and put the rest away. And then I have some more crocheted flowers. These are just little fluffy ones. They're pretty thick. Mm, I'm not sure I want to use those. I don't think I'm going to put those in. Um, I might put that in. That's a little big, but I don't think I'm going to put those. Who knows what that is? Oh, it's some kind of thing. I'm throwing that away. And then here's a great big one. That's really too big. Put that over here. There's some of those. That's a great big pink one. It's going over here too. Like I said, I don't need to take everything. I just that needs. Look here. <laughs> Look here, Melody. I need <laughs> I need your winder for this. You know what? I didn't even see mine when I was over there going through the closet. I don't know where I put it. It's over there somewhere. I probably stuck it in a tin or something. Get it out of the way because it's kind of an awkward size. It's a big old leaf. I just grabbed these things, dumped them out of the box. So, you know, they're a little big. Actually, I wonder. I probably could take these apart and use them. There was a big bag of, um, you know, I've been selling stuff for a, a long time and um, I go through different stages and what have you. And I, I don't, um, I don't go to shows and stuff anymore because I just can't physically do it. It, it is, it is a lot of hard work and I can't, you know, I got tired of asking people to help me, although they always did, but you know, nobody wants to go spend their Saturday sitting at a place selling somebody else's stuff. You know, so I just um, it got to where I, I just couldn't physically do it. So I have a lot of stuff from different times. And. Um, which is fun, you know, you can always go back and find things as I was going through stuff a while ago, I found a lot of. Um, some dish towels, I used to do uh, like dish towels, embroidered dish towels with crocheted potholders that matched and scrubbies that matched and things like that. So I found some of those, which I was pretty happy about because I really needed some potholders. <laughs> so I found several of those. But it's like it's like going shopping down here, <laughs> let me tell you. Especially when you haven't looked in that stuff for about three years. Come on. I'm trying to get this apart without destroying it. But uh, so I don't even know what I started out to say with that. That's where I've been the last few days. Just <laughs> uh, my mind's been going in every direction. I'm glad for things to be holidays to be pretty much over. And not that I don't like the holidays. I do. But it's always nice to get back on schedule. For what, Teresa? You need a pattern for what? Because anything on this table, I probably don't have a pattern for, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I messed that one up. <laughs> oh, for the leaves. Well, you know what? If I tell you how to do it, can you do it from that? Or do you have to have something written? Because I can tell you how these are made. Okay, we're going to sacrifice the one that's already messed up. Here we go. I hope.
Okay. This is how it's made. And I see if this is a double or treble. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't know how many stitches it is, but it's a, you make a loop, uh, like a single crochet. I'm, I'm sorry, a chain circle and connect it. And then all you do is, um, let me see how many I've got. I'm going to guess and say, let's see. You see that the whole loop is, is a quarter inches across. I mean, half inch across. Sorry. Good grief. Half inch across. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are 12 double crochets. So you would, you know, at the beginning, you would chain three and then do 11 double crochets. And that would give you 12. And then, um, if you want it to be pointed at both ends, this one's only, these are only pointed at one end, but if you want it pointed at both ends, you would stop at 12, and then in the top of the 12, you would do a pico. So it's like three stitches and then back into the top of the double crochet, and then you would do 12 more double crochet and end. Now, if you wanted a point at both ends, you would do the same thing when you get to the end. When you get after the, the last double crochet, you would do a, um, a slip stitch into the first one and then just do a little pico there, three chains and back into the stitch, single crochet back into the stitch, and then you would be done. That's all it is. And so then to shape it, because, you know, you could make it round like this, but you just pull it this way. See, pull it, elongate it so that the point makes the tip. And that's all it is. It's all double crochets. Is that enough information? This guy can still be used, but he's kind of got a problem. Let's see. Yeah, these are still good. That guy's got a problem. And got these. Okay, now I like that size better. That'll work a lot better for what I'm going to use. I'm going to put those all in there because I, I want a lot to leave. So I'm kind of making a division here. The stuff doesn't go. The stuff is probably going in my bag. And then there's another leaf. We don't want to take that. And there's another one of those little pink ones. Oh, here's some more leaves. I'm just going to put those aside for some other time. And then I had a whole bunch of, let me see who else, has anybody else come in that I didn't say hi to? Okay, great, Teresa. <laughs> Teresa, are you kidding me? Are you really 16? Don't be fooling an old woman. So then I created another drawer. I have I used to do a lot with these things, these um, ribbon roses. But these are kind of stiff. I don't know if I want to. I don't think I'm going to put these down there. I'm going to try doing the ribbon, the, uh, the softer ribbon roses first. So I'm going to put these back over here. But I do have some little bitty ones that I might use. If I can do, I can stick those in there and they'll still be flat enough, I think. So I'm going to get a bag to put those in. Well, mine doesn't help me if I turn it around. It says I'm 76. Give me 10, give me 10 next three years that I already have. That'd be great. <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna say I'm older than I am. Okay. That's gonna work. That's 
so many bags. I guess I started crocheting when I was 12. My mother was, a, she crocheted a lot. She did doilies mostly. And um, I always wanted to crochet. And she didn't think I was able, she wouldn't let me, or she wouldn't teach me, let's put it that way, until I was, she thought I was old enough to read patterns and understand them. Because she had a thing about people who crocheted, but they couldn't read a pattern. I don't know why that came about, but she wanted me to be able to read crochet patterns. <laughs> Plus shipping and handling. <laughs> So anyway, I begged and begged her, and she says, no, I don't think you're old enough to understand how to read the patterns. When you are, I'll teach you. Well, one day when I was 12, because I was already sewing and making my own clothes and stuff, I, I never could understand why she kept putting me off. But um, one day I just decided, okay, I'm going to learn how to do this. Because I was always like that. I still am. I think, you know, I don't start with anything simple. I always take the hard stuff and go from there and then learn later on, oh, I should have done this a different way. So anyway, one day I just decided, that's it, I'm going to learn how to do this. So what I did was I took a doily apart that she had been, that she had made. Just an old one, you know. And that's how I learned to crochet, is by taking a doily apart. Of course, I had watched her quite a bit too, you know. So I, I knew, I had the idea. And, uh, but that's how I, mostly how I learned. And I taught myself to read the patterns. So... She was wrong. I could do it. Is everyone else working on right now? Oh, Janet, okay. We'll see you later. Have a nice visit. She's probably already gone. Nothing much exciting going on here. Oh, I don't blame her. Okay, so there are those little bitty ones. I've got like, I'm going to be doing this for a while because I've got several boxes to go through. I don't have to go through every single thing in the box, but um, some of it I will know right away. But I'm just trying to get a few things out and These are peach. Those are pretty. Green. So I don't know who so that sounds good. I haven't had much to eat yet today. I did go by White Castle and got me a uh, tea. That's pretty good. Okay, now that's enough of those. Let's see, I'm, now here's some peach. Um, you probably can't tell, but it's actually peach that matches these little roses. So I'm going to put these. Let me do this. Take off the green ones. I'm going to put these. Peach beads. And with the peach flowers. That way I can use them together easily. This is probably too much, but I don't really. It just depends. I didn't really want to separate them. Have some. That's that's why I have such so much to go through because things are separated. Because I had it, you know, like working on one project and I was using the same type of supply on another project, and um, you 
then I, you never know what you have. Oh, Teresa, I'm glad you liked it. It was fun to make. Okay, and then I have this green. It's like accorded, according. So I'm going to put it. And it goes with, ooh, no, it goes really good with that. So I'm going to put these in the bag together. I'm not going to put all of this. I'm just going to put some of it. This really belongs in the Christmas stuff. My Christmas stuff is getting down to not very much because I've used a lot of it in the past two years. So it's kind of coming down in size. I used to have two big boxes of all kinds of little Christmas things, ornaments and junk like that, you know. Okay, now this is going back. You know what? I think I'm at it. We've been watching this show on TV. It's on, I think it's on Netflix. And it's called Kim Convenience. And it's about a Korean family who has a um, grocery store, little convenience store. It is the cutest show. We laughed our heads off. My husband hardly ever watches stuff like that, you know, watches anything on Netflix or something like that. He likes the Britcom stuff most. And if he watches a movie, it's an old, old movie like Thin Man or something like that, you know. So he's not uh, big on watching a lot of TV. And he found this. His brother told him about this show. He told him it was funny. So we started watching it. And there's only four seasons. And we're almost to the end. <laughs> I'm going to be sad because we really enjoyed it. It's just a really cute show called Kim, K-I-M, Convenience. I think it's the name of it. Check it out. It's pretty cute. Seems like the, the past um, two weeks, really, everything has been out of order. We had um, got stuff over me. We had uh, Christmas and New Year's, and um, some of us were involved in sales over the weekend, three-day sales over the weekend, and it just seems like. It's just been a lot going on. So I'm kind of glad to be getting back to a, some kind of a schedule. I don't know what kind, but some kind of back to normal. <laughs> oh, Christina, yeah, we do too. Well, I'm sorry it took so long. I, there was just things happen sometimes, you know. I don't like to I, I don't like to say I'm gonna do something if I can't get it done when it's supposed to be done, but sometimes that happens. So I'm gonna put some of these things in little bags because then it's easier and it's not such a mess. You can just flip through your box or whatever. I like these a lot, so I figure I'll use all of them. At some point, I'll stuff them in there. Chia chips and hot salsa. Ooh, Barbara, I can't take that hot stuff. They make so much fun of me. My daughter is really good. Um, she's really good at Mexican cooking. Of course, she's had a lot of, um, they go to uh, Mexico quite often on mission trips and other things. And she's had quite the good teachers, the real teachers, you know, show her how to do it the real way. And um, I don't know what this is. 
so she's I'm not a good cook, but she is an excellent cook and everything she makes. Do that mess. And then, you know, she's always making spicy stuff. And um, they know I can't handle it. So she, she'll she'll make guacamole and she'll she'll leave out a little bit. She'll say, Mom, that's that's not the hot. That's not hot. That one's for you. And I'm like, oh good. I'll get my own stuff. But, Always make fun of me. I don't care. Oh, the bug. Oh. I have no idea where this stuff came from. It was just in this little bag, which I thought, ooh, a little bag. I think somebody just made that. Must have been in a Happy Meal or something. Or maybe it was in something that I purchased and somebody gave it in me. There's big Brad. That's nice. I'll put him over here. And some buttons. It's like a little uh, dot thing. I'll put him over here in my little tray. Cute. Okay, and on this button, I'm going to put it in with these roses. Okay, Christina, thanks for coming. I know we weren't very exciting today. Come back again. We'll be doing something else. Okay. I think I'm still planning on being on tomorrow. I'm not positive. If I'm on tomorrow. I'll probably be working on my. Um, Forest journal. I got several journals I want to get finished. I sew in my signatures. Because I don't think I'm going to get done with this anytime real quick. Okay, now. Oh, hi. Mary's listening. Mary, you should be napping. You get up so early. What time do you get up? You have a set time every day that you get up. Because every time I get up, you're already up and on YouTube. Working away. Okay. Okay, I'm starting to get a nice little selection here of things to, to pull out. I think I'm just going to put a little bit of this. Now, I don't need all of this either. Take some. That's big enough. <clears throat> Actually. This is kind of fun because I haven't looked through this stuff in quite some time. It's fun for me anyway. Just like having new stuff. I used to do cross stitch. I mean, it's been a long time ago. I just can't, I can't see well enough anymore to follow the charts correctly. It just is too hard. But I have some beautiful, beautiful uh, cross stitch designs that I'm I'm I should sell or give away or something but um, I just don't have the heart to do it yet because they're so pretty good lord look at all this
Oh, this is doll pattern. Well, that's what this box is. The box I was using when I was making some little dolls. For my granddaughter. That's why it's got stuffing and everything else in here. But that's where all the look at all that. That's where all the embroidery thread is. Okay, this. to where it goes and this needs to go back to sewing so here we go okay so here's the regular It's going to be a, another job, a time, a job for another day. At least these are sorted by color. And there's plenty of embroidery floss in this box without digging out more. Some pretty brands. This is what happens when you, when people know what you like to do they give you some a lot of this is old old embroidery thread i venture to say that most of this thread is at least 20 years old most of it and some of it is older than that because it's been given to me um, when somebody's grandma dies or somebody's aunt passes away or you know whatever they don't know what to do with the stuff so they often give it to me and i don't mind that I, you know i get jewelry and um, old costume jewelry and all kinds of stuff like that isn't that strange i don't have a bag for purple i guess i'm not much of a purple person so here's some that need to be Sort it out. Oh, that's all variegated. Hmm. Let me leave that aside. I need to leave that. That's a beautiful teal color. Hi, Abigail. Welcome. For 4 a.m. Well, you know what? Here lately, if I go to bed before midnight, I'm awake at 3.30. I have to get up, go to the bathroom, then I'm, I'm awake. And um, I wear a CPAP mask at night. And by that time, I, I, it doesn't, it just it doesn't work. It, I mean, it works, but it won't stay on right and it leaks and all this kind of stuff. And I don't know if I get sweaty or what happens, but it's just really irritating. So then I get up, go to the bathroom, and now the dog's awake. So the dog gets up and wants to go out. So my husband, he gets up at 6, and so now we've woken him up. And it's just ridiculous. <laughs> so, you know, he doesn't like me staying up late when he's in bed. He wants me to be sleeping with him, which is fine. I don't like that. But um, he just doesn't seem to get... What is this? Oh my word. What in this world? Looks like a big wad of glue. Look at that. That was in that bag with the with a thread. I have no idea what that is. Anyway, so you know, he wants me to, to go to bed when he does. But if I do, everybody ends up waking up at 3 30 in the morning every single time. So I don't know what to do about it. If I get up and go downstairs, it's not going to be any different. You know, I mean, I could get up and do my thing down here, but he's still going to be woke up. He's a, he's a light sleeper. I think I'm going to leave that out to sort through a little bit. 
because those are variegated and I would like to use some of those. I don't think I have any variegated in here. Okay, Barbara, no problem. Nothing too exciting going on here. Oh yeah, see I could, I think these are, oh yeah. I really had these. These are, oh maybe not. Somewhere I have some uh, silk thread, or maybe it's, maybe it's rayon thread. But that's not them. I don't know what these are all about. But I do have a lot. I do have more space, so I might wind some variegated into this box. That's probably what I'll do. Not a whole lot, but just like one of each color or something. So I could put that aside for now. Put this aside for now. I'm going to put this in here too. Um, Okay, so that's good for now. This is good, sort of good for now. And what's next? Oh. So since, you know, I want to, where is the, I'm trying to see where the um, box is where I've got the ribbon embroidery, which started this whole thing. Here's all my felt. I want to use my felt in my uh, my book over here for the pages, so that I could put needles in them. So I I took brought, I brought the felt out for that, and then I've got this, which is actually a linen type fabric, but it's really a um, it's really a rougher, larger weave maybe. It, it's kind of cool because it looks like it would be really nice to do even cross stitch on. It's it's almost it's almost like a cross stitch. In fact, if you look really if I look really close, I can see where the X's could go. But I thought I'd get that out because that that could be nice too. It's kind of stiff, not stiff, but it just feels different. It's not like it it doesn't have a soft hand. It's uh, it looks like it feels like it would work up really well with embroidery thread. So I got that out. So I'm going to set these back over here. I'm ready to do it. And okay, here's the, here's the, the ribbon box I wanted to see. There's no telling what's in here. I'm just going to pull it out. Oh, that's nice, Abigail. Once we're awake, I can't lay in bed. <laughs> the dog won't let me. She sits on the floor and whines. She either sits on the floor and whines or she jumps up and wants to play. Oh, my gosh. I can't even tell. What does this say? The year on it somewhere. Nineteen seventy six. And it's not finished. I wonder if I should work on this. <laughs> Let's see, how much does it have to be? Well, look at that. I mean it's got a lot done. I just need to finish the border. What was at the bottom? Oh, and put my name. Oh no, there's actually another little on there but boy that's not far from being done I bet I could do that if I put my magnifiers on that's almost done wouldn't that be pretty on a journal Let's see how big is it how big it is six it's about six by seven and a half hmm that would be beautiful on a, oh, I got my, my ideas are going right now. This would be pretty on a, um, a needleworking book. 
you know, with, with the place for your, even for um, thread and everything in it. All right, I'll have to think about that. That's, oh, here it is. Here's the whole picture. I have a girl that it would make good uh, bread cloths. You're right about that. It would. I might have to finish this because it wouldn't take long. I could probably do this. In like two days, I could finish it. I might have, I might would have to, um, you know, go slow with it because it'll give me a headache if I'm not careful. But it's got a little dirt right there. But that that would that would be perfect, wouldn't it? Be good, Mary, for on a uh, book cover. So there's that. I'll we'll put that aside. What else is in here? Oh, this is supposed to be silk embroidery. Oh yeah, I remember this. I use these frames for something else, so I don't know where the frames are. I mean, I don't have the frames, but I did start working on the project. That's ribbon embroidery. You can see that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to use these. And there's two more too, so, you know, I can definitely use these and do some more. So, this is kind of what I wanted to find was my this all goes together. I have a big enough end. Oh. I went to the chiropractor this morning. The other day, I was walking from, um, just walking in. I was going to go get in the shower, and I, was, I had just gotten to the bedroom door from the living room, and my knee popped really loud and hard. And I have not, no, I have not, no, um, what do you call it, um, padding left or whatever you call it in my knees. It's gone. It's like bone on bone and arthritis, too. So, and I'm not a good candidate for knee replacement. So I probably won't get that done. So I've just sort of been waiting for something like that to happen, you know, because I know it's going to eventually. And I've been doing pretty well. I mean, I hobble around, but at least I'm, at least I'm still mobile for the most part. So I, for, that's the first thing that came to my mind when I felt it pop. And I just kind of stood there for a second with my hand on the doorknob as I was walking through the doorway and um, I thought okay that's done so and it hurt when it popped it really hurt so I went to take a step and when I did if I hadn't been holding onto the doorknob I would have been on the ground and I would have been laying there all day because I didn't have my phone um, there would have been no reason for somebody to check on me you know I just would have been there on the floor all day well fortunately I didn't fall. I caught myself. But boy, did it hurt. And it hurt for a couple of days really bad. So I think I did it like maybe last Tuesday. Uh, let's see. I think, yeah, that goes with this. Now, I did make this frame, and it's here somewhere. I just had it the other day, and I don't know what I've done with it. Um, I think that I'm going to use that. On a, uh, well, no, thank. I'm for sure. I'm going to use that on a on a journal too, because it's it's pretty much finished. So I'll look for that. But I'm going to keep this pattern. So anyway, um, I hobbled around and I have a cane that was my mother-in-law's that I've used a couple of times when I needed it really bad, and um, hobbled around with that cane for two days and then. Finally, I woke up and that the next morning, and it was quite a bit better. So I was very, very relieved. I forgot to take care of this a while ago. I don't want that in there. I do have these. Okay, so sorry, I'm getting distracted really easy. All this stuff is so you know how it is. You see stuff that you haven't seen in a while. So you know, I've just been. Uh, 
kind of taking it easy, but still, still sore, but at least I'm getting around. Wow. What a, what a treasure. Look what I got. Eight o'clock. Ooh. Mary, didn't you used to do a lot of cross stitch? This stuff is so stiff. See, I think somebody gave me all of this. So I'm going to put some of that to use. I have so much stuff. I would not be able to use all of it in what's left of my lifetime. I know that. Look at this. So that's one reason I've been selling some things and what have you. But I'm definitely going to put some of this to use. Okay, let's put that over here. Some more thread. Ah, uh, here's the here's the rayon thread. Yeah, this stuff is real pretty. It's really it has a really pretty sheen to it. Yeah, Barbara, you know it just that's life around here anyway. So, because I was limping around a lot, it always affects my back. I have arthritis in there, too. and I have a, um, oh, what do you call that thing? I have a, a nerve. I always call it a zapper. It's, uh, it's an implant in my back, in my side. And um, there's, this is what I, this is what started this whole look through stuff. I was looking for this. This is all silk ribbon. This is what I was looking for right here. But um, so when I went to the chiropractor this morning, he says, oh, my. He said, you're a mess. And I said, tell me about it. <laughs> so he, he worked me over. He's he's very gentle. But I always feel so much better whenever I leave there. So it's worth it's worth the drive. Here's a little um, computation chart. It shows you what size things are going to be. And then on the back, it has a DMC color chart. This is old, 1978. Had that for a while. And here's some more stuff. So, I, you know, I, I always think, oh, man, I need to find a different chiropractor because he's in the town where we used to live, and it's about 40 minutes away. So it takes the whole morning just to spend 15 or 20 minutes with the chiropractor. This is a pull away um, canvas. So you like, you would uh, cross stitch over top of it so that you've got the grid. And then these little, uh, then you would pull, once it's finished, then you would pull these out. And you would just have the pattern on there without the grid. So it's like a waste canvas. There's a pattern I don't need. I'm going to open one of these. So he, um, he always has me do this little exercise so he can see how well I'm doing all right where you lay on your stomach and then you raise your legs up it's like a leg lift only towards the back or you know what I'm saying and it's always an effort for me but today I couldn't even raise my right leg the one that had popped and because of that walking crooked you know with limping around of course it affects your it affects everything. The way you walk affects everything. Oh, here's a pattern I made. But I never did. Um, I never did use it. I never did do it. This was from a book. And I decided I would draw it out and make a pattern with it. But I don't think I ever stitched it.
That was probably in the 80s or somewhere around there. I did stitch this one out that I that I made. That's a seashell. And then I did it bigger so I could see it. <laughs> what was this one? Okay. There's another one I did. It's a little bear. I mean a um raccoon sitting in a inner tube in the water. I don't need to keep those. Kindness in words creates confidence. Kindness in thinking creates profoundness. Kindness in giving creates love. Oh, cute. Oh, this was in one of those um, mugs. They had these mugs where you could crochet, I mean crochet, where you could uh, cross stitch and then you'd stick it down inside the, the um, what's the word I want to use? The mug. It screwed apart so you could stick it up in the side of it. And then the mug looked like this. So I think I made a couple of those apparently. My husband was big into golf for a long time. I don't need to keep two of those, do I? You know, I could use those, couldn't I, in my journal? I could use both of them, all of them. I could use this. And here's some more golf stuff. This actually was really cute. I did this little guy, this little golfer, on a on a um, polo shirt. Nineteen ninety one. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, I can get that too. I think I'm just going to throw these patterns away. I don't need them. Nobody else is going to want them. My goodness, there's a lot of stuff in this box. Here's some more. And this. I've got some navy blue cloth. use this in my farm journal. Cute. I need some more outlining. Only did some. Oh, there's that. Oh, grief, I didn't know this stuff was in here. Need to do something with all this. Just sitting here. That would be a cute little cover. See, I've just been putting off um, getting in this stuff. This was um, supposed to be our name. I wonder where I got that pattern. That's really cute. A little train, some tulips, rooster. Of course, I didn't finish it. But you know, this is big enough. I can actually see it. I bet I could do that if I can figure out where the pattern is. It's probably over in one of my books. I have a lot of books. That's cute. Well, here's a frame. And here are two extremely pretty patterns. They're angels. See if I can turn it where you can see it. There's one. They're pretty. Of course, these are these are large. And the other one is green. Got that circle light, it reflects on everything. So 
but those are pretty. See, these are some of the ones I can't I can't bring myself to get rid of. Okay, this is going to go with my farm journal, and maybe not that one, but put this over here while I'm thinking about it. That's what I've been trying to do as I come across stuff. I'm trying to put it where it goes. And then when I get ready to do it, it's all there. And I don't have to wonder, well, do I have anything I can use that for or use with that? And this is really cute. I'm going to put this. Let me go with those. those. This is nice. Okay, so I don't know what to do with that or that. Something. This is what I was looking for. I and mean, here's some silk ribbon fabric or ribbon embroidery fabric. I'll keep those together. I'll keep that together. Just can go back for now. Oh my gosh. Look at this. More cross stitch fabric. More cross stitch fabric. More. Somewhere I have some of this blue that has, oh, I can't think of the name of it. There's a, a picture. Well, I won't throw away anything that's that's that good, Barbara. And if it's something that's useless, I'm, and you know, there are useless things. So if it's something that's useless, I'll get rid of it. Otherwise, I'll make sure either I use it or it goes to somebody that will use it. Anyway, there's a picture. I think it's called Guardian Angel, but I'm not really sure. It's an angel with two little kids crossing a bridge, and she's sort of like, you know, ushering them across the bridge. It's a pretty well-known uh, picture, and um, but it, and it's not finished. I think that's when I I quit doing a lot of cross stitch because I couldn't see very well. Oh, here's something. This would make a nice donating donated thing. It's a little picture of my cute. Where's the, oh, here it is. Oh, see, this is one that, oh, I think this is one someone gave me too. I was going to do this one, but I never did. So it's not, you know, it doesn't have all that much sewing because it's already painted. That's really cute. 1989. All the thread and everything's in there. Alexa, stop. Oh, Alexa telling me what time it is. She's such a bossy, bossy gal. Yeah, that that's probably I'll give that to somebody because I don't I'm not gonna do it. So for now, I can put the rest of this away. You never know until you go through the boxes what you really need to keep out. Um, no, actually, what I started to say a while ago, and I don't think I ever did, I thought about getting a different chiropractor, but I just like this guy so much. He is so nice. And um, he's not real. Uh, well, with me, he's not real aggressive. You know, he he kind of takes into account what each person needs. And um, I, I really like him. So and, you know, his office is right by my daughter's house. So it's not that big of a burden, but 
So I try to just, on the days I go see him while I'm feeling good, I'll go to Joanne's or something like that before I come home. And I'll take this out. Let's see, what was I keeping? Keeping that, keeping that. With this. I've already done that somewhere here. Keeping that out. I'm gonna put this away for now. Keeping that out. And I'm gonna put these away, but I know now that they're there, so. And then I have these, which are kind of cute. This is Noah's Ark. So it's like a deck of cards. And each one has a has a little picture. And one side has the the stitched picture. So it shows you how it looks when it's stitched. And the other side has the pattern. And it's this one is all Noah's Ark. Oh, how cute is that? Look at that. Come on. Here's a stitch out. He is adorable. So anyway, it's like, ugh, here's Noah with a pig or a sheep. I guess it's a sheep. Or the other side. Yeah, this, this is so cute. Hippopotamus. These are very cute. Okay, so we're going to keep those. Because if nothing else, I'll use them in my sewing journals. And then this one is a monogram. Has all, all the letters. in one style. And these are all these are counted cross stitch. And then this one is another deck of letters in a different style. I guess they just give you two colors. They don't show the actual stitch out. It just shows you the patterns. Which, to me, they could have put that much bigger on there so people could see it better. <laughs> so that's what that one is. So definitely some of these can be used in sewing. This one I'm keeping. Because who knows, someday I may, I may get new eyeballs. Who knows? I doubt it, but that one's not going yet. So these I can use in the sewing. Where's this one? These are going with, keep, these are staying out. Okay. Now that box is, can be, that box can be closed. Too much stuff. This is staying out. Come here, kitty. My kitty cat. He holds my rubber bands. All right, now this is going with this. Open it. And then I got all these ribbons, but I'm not doing anything with them just yet. It's too much. We're going to have to come off of these spools. Does anybody else hate these spools? Hi, Sherry. Hi, Kimberly. I'm just pulling out stuff that I want to use with stitching. I raided my sewing room. Got into all the stuff I haven't been into in about three years because I just haven't had time. Basically, 
it's I, I, that's not really true. I've had time. I just kept putting it off because I wasn't ready to sort that stuff yet, and I still got a lot to do in that. How are y'all today? Have you recuperated from the weekend? Well, here's something that I'm not sure what to do with, but I love it. And I still might just make a pillow out of it. I did this a long, long time ago. And it's all hand quilted, all hand pieced. But I don't know, it's way too big to use without cutting it. It's way too big to use for a, a journal cover or anything. I don't want to cut it up. So I'm probably going to end up making it into a pillow. That's what I had originally had originally intended it for. So that's probably what I'll do. Unless somebody has a better idea how I could use it in a journal, but I really don't want to cut it up. So that's that. Inside. Here's some cross stitch that I did. It's our last name. So I thought that would be for a personal journal. Now this fabric is actually a, um, uh, what's it gonna see? Sounds like my granddaughter. Oh, they're on their way home from Texas on the airplane. This is actually a napkin and it's very hard to see, but there is a, you probably can't even tell. Let's see if I can catch it. Now, there's a um, roses in here. It's very pretty. Now I have a bunch of these. I have a bunch of these napkins, but um, I did that by hand. So I think that would be pretty on a personal journal. So I got that out. And then here is another. This is a needlework piece that I did. I know when I did when I started this. I started this on um, August the twenty eighth of nineteen seventy two. Now you may wonder how do I know that? Because August twenty sixth is when my daughter was born, and I started this two days later. So. Figure out, I need to figure out something to do with those three things. I'm pretty sure I'm doing journal with the barrel. But the other two, not sure yet what they're going to be. All right. I want to take a break from this for a minute and show you what I did uh, when I couldn't come down the stairs from my knee popping. I didn't get to come downstairs for several days. Luckily, I already had some stuff up there that I wanted to, to do some things with. These are um, collage pages. Uh, Abby, that is uh, needlepoint. Cruel is a little different, but it's needlepoint. It's done on a, it's done on a, uh, what do you call it? On a like a grid can on a piece of canvas. Um, the, uh, this piece, how big is this piece? Yeah, it's about, let's see how big it is. It's about 14, 14, no, 13 by 13, really. It's about 13 by 13. It turned out pretty nice. I mean, considering how old it is, how long it's been all folded up and everything, it doesn't look too bad. Oh my goodness. But yeah, that's that's considered needlepoint. Okay. <laughs> Abby, you have no idea, babe. This is this is such a small amount of stuff. I still have more to go through, but I want to show you this too. So um now this, I'm just gonna flip through these pretty quick. And what I do is I make these um um collage pieces 
like this. This is the original. And then I make copies of it, or I scan it and print them out. So I keep the original, or I have been keeping the original, but I went through and scanned all of these. And then here's the printout. It's not quite as bright, but my printer is not that fancy, but it does a good enough job for what I want. But this is a um, piece of, well, the closest thing I can think of to it is a piece of Pellin, which is a stabilizer that you use in clothing. But this is, is like, it, it's really the thickness of a, like maybe a, maybe a little thicker than 65 pound cardstock, but not much, if any. So it's kind of stiff. But what this is, Whenever I paint in my um, art journal, I use this, you know, to keep the keep the paint from getting on other stuff. So I have a lot of this that somebody gave me a big stack of. It's already this size. And I've used it for so much. I think it was originally meant to be some kind of filter. And this lady that worked at a factory gave me a bunch of stuff. She gave me a huge stack of this. She gave me a huge stack of canvas fabric that uh, it's not big. It's like. I don't know, maybe um, half a yard. And then it's real, 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 real long. I mean, really long. And it's heavy. It's not something that you could wash because when you wash it, it does something real funny. It gets real stiff and wonky. But as long as you don't wash it, you can paint on it and everything like that. So I got a lot of that. And then she gave me some really thick, really thick batting looking stuff. I don't have a lot of it, but it's, it's extremely thick and heavy. So I've used a lot of what she's given me over the years, and I've had a lot of it for several years. But that's what this is. This is uh, just a paint off paper, you know, that I used to protect it. And so this is how it looked when it was printed. Looks pretty good, really. I really like it. And here's the other side. Get a couple of them. So that's the only one that's like that. The rest of these are all collage papers. And um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to show you the original because they're all duplicated. So I'm just going to do it like this. And I don't think, I, I'm sorry, I can't, and I can't get closer right now. For some reason, my camera program doesn't want to come up while I'm here. So, but I'll just, I'll just go through them real quick. And some of them are similar because I did a lot with the roses. And these are all like scraps that I've collaged together and then I put like, um, different little cutouts on top of them to finish them off. So I'm just going to kind of go through real quick. Whenever I finish, um, not when I finish, but whenever I accumulate a whole lot of scrap pieces off of my projects, I when it seems to start to get overwhelming, then I sort out and I do this. And um, I end up with something that I can use and I've gotten rid of the scraps. And um, I mean, they're in a piece like this, which I could get rid of this piece too, but for now I'm just keeping them. I can, when I decide to get rid of them, I'll just use these, cut them up, use them for tags and stuff, which is what I use the copies for. So these all, I did all these right here at the same time, all the flower ones. And then, um, and these are stickers. I'm not crazy about the lines around the stickers, but I just decided to go ahead and use them anyway. These are the stickers out of, out of these two books. Oops, why am I turn that upside down? Out of these two books, the Botanist Sticker Anthology and Antiquarian Sticker Book. So that's where this, the ones that have the, the little lines around them, that's where they come from. This one's fairly plain. But... Uh, 
Here's another one with the roses on it. She's got these upside down. Why am I looking at them upside down, I think? Yeah, that's right side up. So I'm just taking little scraps of stuff. Uh, let's see. And sometimes I'll even take, take the original and make a black and white print. It's like having totally different paper when you just do it in black and white. It doesn't even look like the same design to me. So I really like doing that. Or like maybe using the front of it on a front of a tag and then the black and white on the back of a tag. I like doing that too. I'm trying not to give you doubles here. So here's paper that I've dyed. But a lot of it is just little strips of paper that I don't really, you know, I haven't used up. If it's there for a while and I haven't used it up, then that's what I do with it. These are all stickers out of that book. And these stickers, I was upstairs when I did this and I didn't have any glue up there. So these stickers don't want to stick. I don't know. So bear that in mind. If you get one of those books, they don't always... They don't always stick on everything. I can hear the dog upstairs playing with their bone. So this is a paler. Actually, that's the copy. I think on this one, I was trying to figure out the different, figure out better settings for the printer because it wasn't coming out. See, that one's a little better right here. This, I just copied it straight off. These others, were the printouts after they were scanned. And for some reason, they just kept coming out. See, here's the original. Look at the difference. That's not quite acceptable, but it's usable. You know, slap it on a background and do something with it. So here's an example. That's the original. And I still was doing different settings, trying to get a better look. So eventually I'll have to go back and glue these down because some of them are popping off. That's very irritating to me. <laughs> I mean, you know, you pay a lot for those books. You can do a lot of these in a short time and have a lot of papers to use for backgrounds and pages and what have you. And nobody else will have that same page. And there's always other things you can do to them. You paint over them, doodle over them, you know, whatever you want to do. There's some painty paper. That paper might be from Teresa. I think it is. So I did I did this one day when I wasn't able to see that one's totally loose. Totally coming off. All three of these are. I'm sure it's the paper that's under it. I think that's, I think that's some more Teresa's paper right there. So before long, I'll be using up some of these and some projects. I'm ready to get back at it. I'm 
Galen sets. See, I'm not real crazy about this line around here. And normally I would have fussy cut that out, but it's too hard to fussy cut these stickers. By the time you get them cut out, and they don't stick. Well, they don't stick anyway, so I guess it matters. <laughs> There's the last one. So I probably got about mm, 30, 32, something like that. I'm not sure. It seemed like it was 31 or 32. New pages to work with. And I copied every one of them, so I have a copy of each one. All right, so we have a lot more stuff to go through. So it's time for me to stop. So I'm going to say thanks for hanging around and watching me. Watch me sort. <laughs> maybe maybe before long you'll see some of these showing up on my on my stitching projects, and um, you can say, "Oh, I saw when she found that." <laughs> so um, I think I'm going to be back on tomorrow if I can manage it and work on my journals, and um, they are. They're coming along. Found some sorry silk to to use on on the, on them for for closures. And I think I'm ready to put my signatures in to you know stitch my signatures in. So that's probably what I'll be doing tomorrow. So thank you for coming and staying and hanging around. And um, I hope you have a good day, the rest of the day, good evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is. And um, come back again and see me. And I'll be watching for you. Bye-bye.